project was you know, essentially completed, it became clear that there were not enough revenues being generated from the garage to pay the debt service. So it came upon me to figure out what the heck are we going to do to basically fill the gap. It was not high on my list to go and talk to you know the city council and say I need some more revenues you know to pay for the debt service. So I came up with the idea to do an interest rate swap. To make a long story short, Bear Stearns was sending me a big check for the difference. For sending me a big check, took that check, threw it right into the debt service pot. When Mayor Daly recognized that the parking revenue from the underground garages was not likely to pay off, they began to look for other opportunities to effectively privatize its infrastructure as a way of raising money to fill budget holes. They figured, well, you know, why not try the parking garages? The city was able to generate over $570 million in proceeds from monetizing their parking assets. This was a public-private partnership uh, where the garages were turned over to the private sector. They enjoyed all the revenue generated from the garages, but were required to keep those garages updated over time. Any bonds that were associated with the North Garage, the South Garage, or Millennium Park were paid off. So the bonds disappeared. It was the end of them. Millennium Park Foundation is the private nonprofit organization that partnered with the city of Chicago for going on 20 plus years now. The foundation has remained a key partner with the city in the ongoing management, curation, uh, and sort of ongoing operation of Millennium Park. So partly as funding some of those, those operations, some of that ongoing maintenance and upkeep, and also funding other special projects, public art installations and such. We still hold uh, around 50, 55 million dollars worth of endowments and the earnings on those endowments we now use to enhance and maintain those particular spaces in collaboration with the city. Department of Cultural Affairs, who really oversees and programs Millennium Park from the city side, they're funded through the hotel motel tax. That is an excellent method when you are a major tourism city. I think Millennium Park was the spark that reignited the development of the downtown Chicago, created a certain level of prestige, created a certain level of opportunity for development in those particular areas. It's one of the great urban parks in the world. It's got all kinds of urban amenities, public sculptures, places for listening to concerts, a giant playground, public gardens. And having an amenity like Millennium Park that can stand up against other global cities is essential to the economic well-being of the citizens of Chicago. I would say there's a the tendency to be optimistic about the self-financing potential of these, these instruments. Um, and projects, you know, even like Millennium Park, that they will pay for themselves, right? So I think better um, forecasts, revenue forecasting up front is very important to think about when you use these tools and to really identify the other potential stakeholders that are contributing to the expenses and whether or not that's fair. Looking backwards in a, you know, in a rear view mirror, anybody can usually conclude that I could have done it a little better. I think that there was a lost opportunity for Millennium Park. I think that the city should have designated a, 
a kind of special assessment district. All of that increase in value in the area around Millennium Park could have helped pay back those initial expenditures without the potential to harm other taxing jurisdictions. Ultimately, what these, these kind of questions boil down to is, you know, what's the fairest way to pay for this, a new piece of infrastructure or a new large-scale development project or a, a park?